Guys, uh, so thank you for joining the meeting. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, simplified data management uh, with uh, GCP data form. Um, I'm a data engineer, so I'm working uh, as a data engineer over eight years. Uh, was uh, working with a different project. My main focus is to how to bring data into the cloud and uh, what to do with it, basically. And I was thinking that it might be interesting for you if we discuss a little bit about data form because of uh, I know a lot of teams are using dbt and knows what's DB, what is dbt, but uh, uh, not a lot of, uh, from my opinion, are aware of uh, data form and uh, what is it. Uh, basically, it's pretty similar uh, tool. Yeah. Uh, so let's switch to the agenda yeah so oh, wait a second please mm -hmm. so today we're going to talk about uh, complexity of analytical systems uh introduction to uh, recipe data form understanding uh, the problem data form solves uh core concept and architecture Examples, uh, integration with uh, GCP services, advanced features, uh, compare, we'll compare it with DPT and uh, we'll have uh, questions and answers uh, at the end. Let's, uh, let's start. So let's talk about complexity of uh, analytical systems. Yeah, uh, so after... Um, after writing a bunch of SQL queries, uh, you may find yourself uh, that um, uh, actually uh, it's not so easy to manage. Uh, yeah, first of all, we you might have uh, a complex uh, data transformation. Uh, you also have to deal with script management. Uh, you want to run your queries uh, within specific order. Uh, each uh, we we know that SQL uh, has a limitations. You cannot reuse. Uh, some part of uh, SQL code between different um, uh, SQL files. And also we have uh, problems with uh, maintenance in case we have a bunch of uh, complex scripts. Uh, it's really hard to uh, add new features, add new uh, requests, uh, implement new requests. Uh, so basically having uh, raw SQLs uh, as is uh, is pretty complex uh, solution, and uh, uh, here we have uh, a solution for that. So uh, understanding the problem that uh, the problem that GCP data form solves. Yeah. So what what's the challenges in general do we have uh, in SQL development? Yeah. First of all, reusing as already mentioned, reusing statements across uh, different scripts is uh, really challenging. Uh, no built way uh, to write test for data consistency uh, is a pretty important point. Uh, we need to understand that after we run SQL scripts uh, to bring in new data, to transform the data, uh, we need to understand uh, the data is uh, correct uh, and according to our requirements. Um, dependency management requires external software. So in a regular way, you might find yourself uh, writing custom uh, Python scripts to, ra to run your SQL queries and it's uh, not really great. You might want to uh, run another qu query after other and uh, it might be complex as well. And what to do is if query has failed, what to do in other situations, it's a, it's a really problem. Uh, proper data processing requires writing thousands of lines of SQL code. Yeah, and uh, documentation and uh, metadata management are commonly treated as a secondary considerations. So in in this uh, uh, in a, when you have this uh, hell, I would say of writing a, a huge amount of uh, SQL files, handling them, uh, the combination for sure will be not your priority, but it's pretty important for end consumers. Yeah, who will need to understand uh, what they're using, how data was created, and so on. So let's uh, go to the next slide and we'll talk about core concept and uh, architecture, yeah? So usually we have this flow, ETL or ELT. Today's is uh, pretty popular is ELT process where you're uh, trying to bring your data 
as this uh, into the data warehouse or uh, data lake. And uh, after that, you can uh, process and prepare your data. Uh, so on this slide, you can see that uh, we we can have basically different uh, data sources, uh, such as database replication, uh, uh, other pipeline ingestion, event tracking into just tables. Uh, I would say it's a raw zone where we can have raw unprepared data, not validated, uh, the data that uh, we need to cover with test to understand uh, its consistency and so on. And the uh, data form is placed uh, like a team inside Yale team. So it uh, is um, under like transform. So we're trying to prepare the data uh, for the consumers. Yeah, so with the possible consumers is uh, there's uh, BI tools, uh, different uh, AI and ML applications uh, and uh, et cetera, yeah. So uh, what data form can handle for you? Yeah, so first of all, it's uh, responsible to build SQL pipeline. So it, uh, it can run uh, at any scheduler. At, uh, uh, you, can, you can manage dependencies between pipelines. Uh, also, data form supports a version of control. Uh, it's pretty important to track uh, what has changed. So, and uh, actually you can embed uh, even your data form uh, into existing project, yeah. And it's responsible for deploying. So you don't need to write your own CI/CD process. Uh, it's a built-in feature that uh, after the uh, merging your changes in the specific branch, it's pretty easy to configure. You can uh, you can configure a deployment, for example, on scheduler every hour, every few hours. Or you can uh, use uh, your external CI/CD tool just to trigger schedule deployment from BigQuery. For example, you want to have a deployment right after you merge uh, changes, and uh, these changes were about uh, your data data form code. Uh, so it will be triggered uh, by CI/CD, recognized and triggered, it, uh, so data form can deploy. Yeah, let's uh, let's go with uh, with, a, with an example. So here is here is a pretty simple example. So uh, we will go from uh, queries and how we can uh, transform them and uh, as a result have uh, executable scripts uh, uh, to simplify your process. Basically, on the left side you can see we are creating cleaning sales uh, from so we are interested in sales ID, sales date. Product ID, customer ID, sales amount from raw sales where sales amount greater than zero. Yeah, so we're creating this table, but in traditional script, SQL scripting, uh, as, already, as uh, already mentioned, you cannot write test. So you can write test. It will be separate SQL files that you have to execute, understand how it's execute, when and why. So, uh, but in general, yeah. And uh, on the right side, you can see that aggregated sales is uh, something that we want to share with uh, our BI tool, for example. We're creating aggregated sales. It's a total amount of sales by sales date and product ID and uh, grouped, uh, yeah, uh, from the clean sales table, yeah. So you can see here, we are trying to build a connection between those SQL scripts and um, uh, you, in, in case of uh, regular implementation, I would say uh, you have to manage this connection on your own end, uh, but uh, inside the GC data form, uh, you can easily do those connections and, and data form will understand that uh, you will want to run uh, initially clean sales and after, after and only after clean sales has finished, uh, you want to run aggregated sales. <clears throat> Yeah, let's go to the next slide. And uh, first of all, before we begin to transform those SQL queries, let's talk about project structure. So um, how the uh, project should be organized, yeah? So first of all, in data form models are SQL X files, yeah? So they have this extension and data form will recognize them. Uh, the second one that uh, if you're creating your repository, you have to put all the models inside uh, definitions folder. Yeah, we have a folder, it's called definitions. It's a hard-coded folder name. You cannot change it. Basically, all of your uh, SQL X files will be located there. And we have uh, two additional files, uh, workflow settings YAML or data form JSON. You have to put it into root folder. It's a default configurations. Uh, 
you can see uh, on the right side settings YAML. So you can define there uh, your uh, default project, default data set location and the social data set. So it uh, by default, uh, if you do not write anything into your SQL file, SQL X of uh, data form will use uh, this uh, uh, settings YAML to uh, get information about uh, which one I have to use. And uh, a package JSON, uh, it's uh, stores project metadata, dependencies and scripts. Uh, basically, data form is a JavaScript framework and we have to configure their dependencies. So uh, it will be installed by data form automatically once uh, you uh, put their uh, all dependencies that you have to use into in your project. Yeah. Let's switch uh, to the next slide, uh, working with a data form. Yeah, basically you can see on your screen is a data form UI. Uh, what is really great that uh, you have this uh, data form ID and uh, you can develop your, <coughs> you can develop your uh, models directly in uh, web UI. You don't have to install your own. ID you don't have uh, to so what what's the what's the plus basically you can easily share your code you can just copy your link and share with your teammates and uh, they can continue editing your data and uh, uh, another plus of using web ID is uh, you can run your models you can test the models uh, directly through web UI how to open this uh, data form ID is pretty simple you have just to go to BigQuery and there will be like on the left side, uh, there will be a data form link. You can open it and uh, you're in data form uh, ID. Yeah, I would say. So on the main um, uh, tab, you can see the code. Uh, you can see that uh, there are messages that you can commit uh, 388 changes. So you can commit your code directly from ID, from web ID. Yeah and uh, creating PRs, uh, it will create a link to GitHub uh, if you connect your, for example, your GitHub account, uh, a GitHub repository, it will uh, create a link for creating PR directly from this ID. And on the left side, you can see a project structure. Yeah, as already discussed, uh, we have a data form JSON package. JSON data form JSON is about uh, environment variables, default or the, that environments variables that you want to use. Uh, package JSON is about dependencies uh, because of, uh, as already mentioned, uh, data form basically is a JavaScript framework. So you can define, define your dependencies there. And uh, definitions. Uh, yeah, definitions, it will contain all of your data models. Uh, all of the files are uh, defini our models have their extension SQL X and data for automatically will recognize them as, as a model. Yeah, something as executable. So uh, let's let's go to the transformation itself. Uh, previously we were talking about uh, just raw clean sales data script. So how to transform it into data form script, yeah? So at the bottom, you have to define a config uh, block. Yeah, config is uh, basically uh, your configuration, your metadata about the uh, provided uh, model. Yeah, you we can see the type is table. Uh, it means that uh, it will be each time on, on the run, it will overwrite the result of the SQL query. We will talk about different types later. <laughs> Sorry, uh, description, uh, so data form. Data form automatically will put the description into your table uh, for you. And uh, a schema, uh, schema is uh, a data set, yeah, where to put your table. So you can see there are no any uh, name provided. Uh, you can provide your custom name. But in case of name is not provided, uh, it will use a file name as a table name. So pretty simple and uh, straight, straightforward solution. So here I can see uh, the SQL script. Uh, uh, we are selecting the same sales ID, sales date, product ID, customer ID, and sales amount from uh, from a ref. Yeah. So when we're talking about ref, it means for data form uh, that we want to use another model as another defined model to query your data and data form will be aware that 
you want to create dependency and to run probably want to run uh, this model uh, sales uh, uh, before we are running this clean sales. Yeah, but you can configure a little bit another flow. It depends on the text, and uh, we will talk about scheduling later. I will show you now. Uh, I will try to explain you. So also uh, we we have this code tab. Also we have a compiled graph tab. So uh, right now we have a pretty simple, uh, straightforward uh, dependency. We are reading from sales. We, as a result, we have clean sales, and as a result, we have sales report. The depend dependency flow is pretty simple and straightforward. But in case of complex transformation, uh, this compiled graph will help you to understand uh, uh, how your flow organized, and uh, maybe you will be able to find the complex uh, connections that you want to simplify. So it's pretty uh, important feature as well. Uh, so let's go to the next slide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's talk about uh, main data form objects. Yeah, that are available. So we have a regular table. Uh, as already mentioned, it's a table that uh, you can. Uh, it it will be refreshed uh, each time uh, on uh, every run. Yeah. Depends on your scheduler. A view, uh, it's it will create a view each time you will. Uh, it will run uh, the model, yeah. So it will not touch any data. It just will create a view definition, and that's all. And uh, incremental table, yeah. So we have uh, this uh, config type incremental, and uh, where we can uh, have uh, incremental changes. And uh, also we have this ability to define uh, like uh, what what are going to read as a source. Yeah, here we can see this um, code is when incremental. We want to read uh, on the latest changes. Yeah, in case of it, uh, we are starting from scratch. We want to read all of the changes uh, for this country. Yeah. Uh, so you might find yourself asking uh, what is better to use, regular table or incremental. You might think that incremental is some kind of uh, the solution that uh, you want to go everywhere because of uh, its incremental updates. You can you can do whatever you want, but actually it uh, depends uh, on use case. Yeah. So in case of uh, you have a pretty small data or you do do not have a pretty frequent uploads and your data is not really huge. It's better to go for sure with a regular regular table table uh, because of it will be like overwritten. The logic is pretty simple. Uh, in case of you have a pretty uh, huge amount of data and uh, uh, fully reload this data each time is uh, will take a lot of time, will consume some money. So maybe it's not a great idea. It's better to define your incremental model. Yeah. But it will like uh, add additional complexity. So you have to define this uh, one incremental definition. Uh, you have to define your uh, unique uh, case. So in case of uh, you are going not only to append data, but in case of you want uh, to merge data to update existing records. So you might want to define that logic as well. And uh, the, as a result, incremental approach uh, might be complex. So, but it's really supports and uh, it's pretty easy to define uh, and uh, it's really great that data form supports those cases. So let's uh, go to another slide. Let's go, let's talk about testing. Yeah, how we, how we can test our models. Uh, not sorry, not models, but uh, how we can test data consistency. Yeah, so those tests are about validating data as a result of your uh, data model execution. Uh, so we can have a test we're defining in assertion block by default. We can uh, uh, we have a default implemented test uh, such as not null. So you don't want to have this user ID, customer ID, email. Uh, they should not be on the label. It will check. And basically, in case of test failure, it will uh, print, uh, it will add this uh, information into your log system, into your st uh, stack driver logging, and uh, you can create an alerting uh, to understand something has happened. Uh, you can uh, understand 
the details of her. Yeah, you can configure alerting and you will receive a mail notification or, or whatever it is. Additionally, to default uh, def default assertion, you can have uh, row conditions. Uh, it's some kind of sub query that uh, you can apply, and uh, uh, that form will receive a uh, uh, data form will verify if you have something uh, out of this query. Yeah, for example, you want to have a mail like this pattern, or sin update is null, or sin update is greater than uh, this date. So this data should be, uh, should be according to these uh, requirements. If no, uh, the test will fail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Additionally, for that, uh, if you want to run a really custom test, uh, and uh, maybe your your logic is pretty complex and you want to verify, so you can you can define your test actually in a total separate file called uh, like assertion with a type assertion, where you can define your test. Yeah, so you can create a dependency using the same reference from your table and uh, validate uh, here is something null or no, not null in this example, but uh, anyway, you can write your your own test uh, and do whatever you want, yeah. And uh, also, yeah, we have a default one example is unique key. So uh, this uh, query will, each time it will identify if there are any duplicates existing in the data. So pretty important test as well, predefined. Yeah, that's about it. Let's uh, talk about documentation, yeah. So documentation is a pretty important point. Uh, it's a pretty useful features future for the guys who will use your data and will not be aware of data form and uh, uh, will not be aware of your data transformation at all, yeah? So guys might be interested about description, understanding how this field was created and uh, data form provides you an easy way to create the documentation, yeah? So uh, directly in the into your SQL X file, directly in uh, your model, you can define your description. This description will be applied to your uh, table, and also you can uh, call, you can have a column level description. So you can define a description for each column separately. So in this example, we have three columns. Uh, we have even like uh, record repeated column and uh, we can define there our descriptions, whatever we need, yeah? <coughs> no, I'm sorry. Uh, you also uh, might be interested, okay, we can have a different amount of models and they might have uh, the same columns, yeah? How, how it's possible uh, not to have duplicates in descriptions uh, and uh, but uh, to have description only in one place and ability to to reuse this description basically yeah you might find yourself asking this question and uh, the solution is exists inside data form because of uh, you can define your uh, description directly in JavaScript file yeah so you can define their constants and uh, you can uh, um, the all the JavaScript files should be inside includes folder. It's another optional folder uh, where you can put all of your JavaScript code and you can just define your constants uh, with the descriptions there, export it, export it, and uh, you can use as a reference inside your uh, models uh, to avoid this uh, duplication problem. Uh, I will show you later how it looks like directly in, in the model. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about JavaScript capabilities inside data form, yeah. First of all, uh, you can define your JavaScript blocks directly inside the model if you want, yeah. So here is example. <coughs> you can see we're defining these constants uh, foo equal to one and we're defining our function. Uh, what we do, what we're going to do with the data, yeah? So at the bottom, you can see select, uh, we have a reference for this foo variable, and we can apply a function bar to this foo, and the result have a two. This code will be compiled to the right one, so select one as one, two as two, pretty straightforward. So, uh, and uh, it works, yeah? So the pretty important point uh, regarding JavaScript, uh, and how JavaScript actually works inside data form is that is a 
um, uh, you're not going to run any JavaScript directly in uh, BigQuery. Yeah? So uh, your JavaScript custom code is responsible to actually to return a data or or to return uh, some SQL code. Yes, yeah? so that you can use inside your queries. So it's pretty similar to Jinja templates inside DPT, but here's the important difference that uh, JavaScript is uh, much more flexible. So you can define whatever you want and do whatever you want, basically, knowing uh, JavaScript, yeah? So yeah. you can put JavaScript block directly in uh, your file, or you can put uh, actually um, a JavaScript uh, code inside uh, as in the previous example inside includes folder and uh, define functions there export them and use directly in, in, inside your sqlx files in case of you want to reuse some part of the code yeah so here is an example uh, we're defining uh, this a constant launch date we want for example to have uh, some kind of start date as a constant a constant defined inside uh, only in one place, yeah. We're exporting this constant, and uh, inside um, your model, you can just directly use uh, your constant, yeah. So it's pretty easy. You have to put their file name, dot, and the variable or a function that you're going to use, and that's all. Yeah, pretty simple approach and uh, pretty reliable. Uh, so let's go to the next uh, slide, version of control. Uh, yeah, so by default, the data form supports this uh, different uh, version of control systems, Azure DevOps services, Bitbucket, GitHub, GitLab. So you can connect uh, endpoint to the uh, repository, to, re to the existing repository, or you want to create a new one and uh, define uh, only something that you have defined, what you have defined, yeah? So you have to create a definitions folder, you have to create a data form JSON and, um, and settings.yaml uh, file, and uh, data form will pick up all of this information, will uh, download and install only the, only the dependencies, and uh, you will be able to work with uh, data form IDE uh, directly from uh, DCP console, yeah? Let's talk about scheduling, how so how we can schedule our models. Uh, so we we have to create a tax uh, inside your model. Yeah, for example, this example, we have daily and hourly. So uh, it's your custom names. It's not something data form will parse and understand when to run. So it's something that uh, you want to, to name it. It's only for reference. Uh, after that, using these tags, uh, you will be able to create a scheduler. Uh, we will talk about this a little bit later. So uh, where the tags are available, yeah? So in a table, in a view, in an incremental uh, model, in assertion and operation. So assertion, uh, as, already, uh, as we already discussed, is a custom execution test. And you can, you can actually run your assertion independently from your model. And the operation is basically in case of you want to execute custom SQL operation. For example, you want to update your data on, um, to fix issue with data, you can create your operation and schedule it as well. Yeah. Or you can uh, actually, if you want, you can uh, text is optional one. You can skip a text uh, and uh, you will not have any schedule. So by default, it will just create a model. It will not create any tables. It will just have uh, like you have to execute it manually to to uh, perform an action. Yeah, I would say. So uh, how we can schedule it? Yeah. So what the what the way uh, uh, exist? Uh, how we can schedule our models? Uh, so we have built-in solution inside data form. It's uh, really great that you don't have to create another service. You don't have to pay for it. Uh, by default, we have a pretty simple and. Uh, reliable uh, this uh, workflow configurations. It's a built-in solution inside data form. It uh, uses uh, Cron's uh, definition to schedule your jobs. Yes, yeah? so there you're selecting a tax that you want to run and and uh, you're selecting, uh, you're defining your uh, Cron. Uh, additional to that, uh, we have uh, data form supports uh, scheduling using workflows plus cloud scheduler. So in case of uh, you have a more complex use case, 
and uh, for sure uh, data form supports uh, composer yeah advanced scheduler so when when to use uh, these uh, schedulers yeah basically the the in, the first one the embedded is the workflow configurations is when you just to know um, your models when to run them you just start them and uh, it's like out of the box solution but in case of you want to have a support for more complex use case such as uh, imagine the situation that you have a python script is running somewhere and you want to have uh, your model running uh, only after this uh, python script finish uh, its execution you can go with uh, actually with composer and define their dependencies there uh, because of Composer, it's a pretty uh, flexible solution uh, that supports Python and uh, like etc. So you can define your executions uh, there. Any any complex transformation, basically, yeah. Uh, that's it about scheduling. Uh, so and let's talk about comparing with DBTM. What's what's the difference? Uh, what's the similarities? Yeah. So the key simil similarities is um, uh, modular transformations so they both support uh dividing your complex sql scripts into the uh, models that you can run and define their dependencies which is uh, great version of control they both supports uh, um, uh, git uh, so they both supports uh, data testing you can define your custom tests you can define uh, your test whatever you want so really great uh, documentation i know the dbt supports documentation data form as well easy of use yes yeah, so it's additional points so uh, it really simplifies your workflow and the scalability yes yeah, so you can define a huge amount of models uh, uh, depends on your use case uh, and it will be not be a problem for data form as well as for dbt so the key difference is the pricing yeah so pricing uh i know that uh, dbt you can uh you can download and use it for free but in case of you want to have a cloud solution you have to pay for it yeah so regarding uh data form it's totally free you don't have to pay for anything it's a serverless solution such as bigquery so and uh, it's embedded yeah Data platform support. Uh, the difference is that uh, data form is focused on uh, BigQuery and only BigQuery. Uh, compared to DBT, uh, it's, it can support uh, different uh, data warehouse solutions. And the BigQuery is, uh, in our case, in GCP, is uh, only one option. Yeah, so it's a wider support to different uh, data warehouse solutions. Uh, the difference is supported language. So basically, data form is using um, JavaScript. DBT uses uh, Jinja templates. So I would say data form is more flexible there. Uh, I can I can provide, uh, for example, one uh, use case where in our project uh, the JavaScript uh, was more more flexible. Yeah. So unfortunately, data form doesn't support like seeds. Uh, at DPT, you can define your custom uh, CSV small file and uh, you can create a table based on this file. And uh, Dataform does not support it, but uh, we implemented this solution using JavaScript. Yes, so basically we defined our definition um, uh, directly inside JavaScript and uh, we created a function and we are just calling this function on top of our data and it works. Yeah. Additionally, what I wanted to say is the community support. So DBT has a larger community support. So and, uh, in case of uh, something goes wrong, it might be easy to find what uh, like uh, uh, through the internet, what has happened in case of you're not able to debug um, in your like use case. So that's, that's the main uh, similarities and uh, key differences here yeah, uh, regarding those solutions. Let's, uh, it's, it's the last slide. Uh, actually, if you have any questions, please ask. I will try to answer them. Thank you, Alexander. Actually, we have one question in the chat. Could you please check it? Yeah. Question, is there an operation to call data from models from Airflow? Yeah. So you can, uh, you can, for sure, you can call. I already mentioned that. Uh, you, there are predefined operators exist. 
Uh, so, but it's not, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's not available directly in Airflow open source solution. It's only available in Composer, but uh, it's better to double check. Yeah, there are uh, different uh, operators exist to be able so data form, uh, so Airflow can uh, execute uh, data form. And uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you can define the red tag and uh, basically Airflow will grab those tag and uh, um, uh, execute all of the models that are defined under this tag. Yeah, that's the main idea.